Hello friends, I have a new reading vlog today and this one is going to be a little bit different because I am going to have my siblings choose my read for me this week since I am staying with them. But first, before my brother picks, I am going to show you the options I have. So first I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Stolen Air by Holly Black, Legendary by Stephanie Garber, Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter, Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross, You With a View by Jessica Joyce, Percy Jackson Jackson and the Olympians, the first book, The Lightning Thief by Rick Ray Orden. American Royals by Catherine McGee. Trial of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. Tooley. And Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. All right, <laughs> you come in now. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hello, my name is Brandon and I am Katie's younger brother. Yeah. Three fun facts about me is I am currently a senior in high school. My favorite state is Florida and I want to talent show for hula hooping. The book that I chose for Katie to read is The Seven <laughs> Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because I know this is a hyped book that Katie, that has been on Katie's to be read for a long time. It has. Yeah. So I will read this and then <laughs> as I read it, I will let you know what, or maybe just after I finish it, I'll let you know what. I think. And then after this I'm going to have my other brother and my other sister choose one. So that will be exciting. But I am going to start this here in the next day or so and I will keep you guys updated. It has actually been quite a bit of time since Brandon picked the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I mean it hasn't been super long but it's been a couple days and I am just now getting ready to start it. I was actually finishing up a book for another video but I am still going to proceed with this video and I am super excited about reading this. I can't wait to see what I think of it and if it lives up to the hype. I honestly can't believe I am about to start it. It almost feels surreal because I have seen and heard so many amazing things about this book. Pretty much the only thing I know about this book is that it takes place in old Hollywood and I think there's a journalist element to it or an interview element to it. Not quite like Daisy Jones and the Six where it's completely interview but I do know that Evelyn Hugo is telling her story to an interviewer. Since this book is so popular I did actually have some things spoiled for me but I'm so excited to read it. I love Taylor Jenkins reads writing and I'm excited to read another one of her books. With all that said, let's get started. I will share more of the plot once I get further into it. some Evelyn Hugo updates for you. I am currently just under halfway through. Last night I only read about, I don't know, two or three chapters and the chapters are kind of short in here so it wasn't too much. I think I got to page 30 last night and then I read another chapter or two this morning which you guys saw as I was drinking my coffee and then I was able to get the audiobook on Libby and I just wanted to keep reading and so I've been listening to that all morning so sorry that I can't really get any clips of that since I'm listening to it at work and I am eating this book 
write up and I have been so nervous about reading this book because I thought it may not live up to the hype. I just was concerned. This is probably one of the most typed up books I've seen and I am happy to say that it is living up to the hype for me. I just love Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing and I love her characters. I think her characters are so beautifully messy but you just want to root for them. I love that in characters. I feel like I felt the same way about Daisy Jones and the Six. All of those characters had their flaws and imperfections but I feel like it made them seem so much more real and relatable and you loved them regardless of their imperfections and I feel like Evelyn Hugo is also a character like that. Actually I just realized I didn't explain the plot of the book but basically this is following a journalist Monique Grant and Evelyn Hugo picks her to write her biography and so throughout the book there's kind of underlying plot of Monique trying to figure out why Evelyn chose her and then it's also showing Evelyn Hugo's life and obviously it's called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so she's explaining her life and how she met her husbands and what led her to this point and just how her life has been being a movie star and I love it. I love the setting, I love the writing as I mentioned and just seeing her relationships with the husbands develop and seeing her friendships with other people develop it is just so captivating and immersive and I think I'll probably finish this today because I am loving the audiobook. It's almost like Evelyn Hugo is telling me her story as I am listening to it and I am having a great time with it and I am very happy to be reading it. Like I mentioned last night, it's just so surreal to be <laughs> actually reading it, but I also meant to mention that I had known kind of where this book was going to go, so it's been interesting to know where it's going and also reading it, but it's still just as much of a fun time, and so if you also had this book spoiled for you, I would still recommend reading it. It's still super fun to listen to Evelyn Hugo's story and also to hear about Monique's story as well, because as we're listening to Evelyn's story, we're also following Monique and I am also just enjoying that storyline as well. I am just excited to keep reading and I will update you later. so attached to the characters. I am almost done with this and it's just like Daisy Jones and the Six where I feel like Evelyn Hugo is a real person and I want to go watch the movie she's in and read books about her and see old interviews of her and it's just so crazy how Taylor Jenkins Reid can make me feel that way. It's truly amazing but yeah this book took some turns that I was not expecting and there's definitely some sad parts like I truly wasn't expecting some of the things that happened to happen but yeah this is absolutely worth the hype to me right now but I am currently on the last husband's section agreeable Robert Jameson so I am going to finish this and I will talk to you when I'm done and I actually did already have my younger sister pick my book she didn't want to be in the video which I totally understand but after I finish this I will talk about the next one
husband of Evelyn Hugo last night and I loved it so much. It was absolutely worth the hype. I honestly am like, why did I put this off so long? And I am just very glad my brother picked this for me. So I finally got to read it because this is one I could have seen myself putting off and putting off and putting off just because of all the hype and how worried I was it wasn't going to live up to the hype. But I am very glad that it did. And I just love the story. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing. I love her characters. I love everything about it. And I can't wait to read Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books. The only books I've read of hers are Seven Husbands, One True Loves, and Daisy Jones and the Six. And I may even have to reread One True Loves because it's been a while since I read that. But yeah, everything about this just completely met my expectations. I feel like I can see why people would criticize this. I feel like one of the main criticisms I've seen on this is that Evelyn Hugo isn't likable, but I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid did that on purpose, so that didn't really bother me. I loved her. I loved how kind of dynamic she was and how many different sides of her she had, and I thought Taylor Jenkins Reid explored the balance between good and bad and the gray area very well, like how no one is just all good and no one is all bad. I thought that was a really interesting theme in this book, and I loved it. <laughs> I would definitely recommend this, and now we are on to the next book which I actually started last night. This book is a book my sister chose for me. So the book my sister chose for me is American Royals. She chose this one because she read it almost two years ago now and she wanted to know what I think of it. So I am only a little bit in. I think I'm about four chapters in and this book takes place in kind of a different world where instead of a democracy America has a monarchy so in this book we are following the heir to the American throne Beatrice we're following her younger sister Samantha and we're following two other girls one is kind of more of a schemer her name is Daphne and she just wants to have a higher title and the other is Nina and she grew up with Princess Samantha and Prince Jefferson which is Beatrice's younger sister and brother. They're twins and so hopefully that makes sense. It's lots of different connections so far but I'm loving the four different point of views. I feel like it keeps me interested, keeps me on my toes and I just feel like it will be super fun and interesting to go on. And this is a four book series, I think. The fourth book was released last year, I think, and I'm not for sure if that's the last one. But I will keep you updated as I read more. But so far, I am enjoying it. I haven't made a whole lot of progress in American Royals yet, but I am really enjoying the parts that I have read. I think in some of the reviews in the front of the book, they kind of compared it to Gossip Girl, and I can definitely see where they're getting that from because it is definitely reminding me of it, and I can't remember if I said this before or not, but I am loving following the four different characters. I feel like they're all so different and have their own different problems that they're going through, and it's really entertaining and fun to see how they're working through it and I feel like there's going to be lots of little romances that I'm going to want to root for and I am just loving it so far. So shout out to Kristen for picking this book for me. I am going to take a shower right now but then I am going to get out of the shower and read for the rest of the evening. for you all. Ignore the editing setup in the background that I just got done editing but I wanted to give you all a little update on American Royals and I am at such a good part right now. It is getting very interested and I'm very invested in the stories just like I said before. I just love these characters and even the ones who are unlike boys still understand like their motive and where they're coming from but I 
think my favorite perspective right now is Beatrice's, but I also really like Nina. I feel like we haven't really got to know Sam too well, but I'm hoping we get to know her more in the future. And Daphne is very interesting, that's all I'll say, so I don't give anything away. But yeah, it's very interesting because this book, while it does have a plot, I feel like it's rather not necessarily slow moving, but yeah, I guess I would say it's slow moving because this is my opinion. But I feel like we're just kind of following these characters' lives and what they're doing, what they're going through, rather than having a really strong plot right now. But I feel like that could change. Like, I'm only just under halfway through, so that could still definitely change. But either way, I am still loving it, and I am excited to continue, so that's what I'm going to do. that I am loving about this book is the writing. I feel like the writing is so captivating and immersive and I feel like I'm not the best at describing writing in unique terms but I just really like it. It's like the perfect balance of descriptive and dialogue. American Royals earlier today and I didn't end up updating for like the last half of the book because I felt like it didn't really have too much new to say but I finished it and I loved it. It kept me so invested. I loved following the different characters because they were all so individual and were going through their own thing and it was just really fun to see how they worked through their issues and just to follow along with their life. It definitely gave Gossip Girl vibes because we were just following them and seeing what they got up to but also there was a lot of drama that unfolded and it was really fun. I think I will give it 4 stars. I may sit on a little bit more. Maybe 4.25 stars. I think since this book was an introductory book I got attached to the characters but I think I'll get even more attached as the series goes on because right now the series is 4 books. I'm not pretty sure if there's going to be any more but I am excited to see where it goes but as I was reading it I just felt like I was watching a TV show unfold. It was just so good. I loved all the extravagance because obviously it follows the royals of America and their spas and dress fittings and dealing with paparazzi and all that sort of stuff and it was just so fun and interesting and it was very much like a fresh and unique book because concepts were just like I've never read a book like it before and I would highly recommend it. I am very glad Kristen chose that book for me and like I mentioned I am so excited to continue the series but now I can talk about my next book. This is book my youngest brother picked out for me and he wanted me to read this because he knew I read the first book of Caraval. He picked Legendary because he wanted me to continue the series which I also wanted to continue the series and I already started a little bit. I'm only one chapter in but I am already loving being back in this world and I am loving reading Stephanie Garber's writing again. Her writing is just so magical and lyrical and it really captures you and makes you invested in the story I think and so I am excited to continue this and see where it goes. I don't have too many thoughts yet but I will keep you updated as I read more. have 
uh, update on legendary for you all and i have not made a whole lot of progress since we talked which was a couple days ago now but i am really enjoying this book i almost feel like i am just a bit slumpy right now and i've also been focusing on editing and all that stuff more but it's like i feel like i'm kind of in a reading mood but i don't know anyway like i said i'm really enjoying this so i'm hoping reading this for quite a bit tonight will kind of help get me more in a reading mood but i did kind of want to update you guys i'm also kind of hesitant how much i want to talk about this one or what specifically i want to share since this is the second book in the caravos series i will say that this one kind of follows a newer character as you guys know if you watched my reading fantasy books where we caravos follows scarlet so this book isn't following scarlet scarlet is still in this book but just not as much like the main person is someone different and i'm really liking it it's pretty much left right off from where Caraval ended and so I'm loving it. This one is just as magical and there's also a little bit of romance in this and a lot of intrigue and wanting to know what happens and there's a big character in this book that I feel like we haven't really met yet and I just want to meet that character already. So I am excited for that to happen but yeah all I can say right now without giving any spoilers is I am loving how magical it is. I also love Stephanie Garbage writing. She just has a way with her writing that makes you want to keep reading, gets you invested in the characters, and helps you visualize where the characters are. It's almost like watching a movie or a TV show, which I love. And yeah, I'm just excited to see where it goes. Like with Caraval, I'm really not sure where this is going to go. I feel like with these books, I'm not sure what direction they're going to take ever. It's just kind of like you are along for the whimsical, magical ride that is Caraval. So I am not complaining about that. I would also consider this a more kind of low stakes fantasy. Like there are stakes in it, but not a whole lot. And it's not like a book where people are at war, if you know what I mean. And it's kind of nice to have a change of pace from like a war fantasy book, even though I haven't read one in a while. But I feel like if you read so many of those, they start to blend together. So along with that, I also just like how unique the premise of this one is. I haven't really ever read anything like this. The only potential similar one is The Night Circus. I also mentioned that in my reading fantasy books for a week, but even then they still stand apart and stand on their own because the plot lines are so different and the romance is so different. I also feel like this has a bit more going on than The Night Circus did, but all that to say, I am loving it, but I will get to reading soon, but I wanted to crack open a drink with you guys. It is a limoncello LaCroix. I'm not a huge LaCroix girl, but this one is so good. literally like a lemon meringue pie. I love it. It smells so sweet and so good, but it's not super sweet. It's kind of weird. Anyway, now that I have my beverage, I've got my book. I've got my cozy sweater on, and it's also supposed to be rainy and stormy tonight, so those are the perfect dream vibes, so let's get to reading. <laughs> This is one line, it's not a spoiler or anything. It says the air tasted like wonder, like candied butterfly wings caught in sugared spider webs and drunken peaches coated in luck. So it's very lyrical and magical. <laughs> halfway done with legendary now after i talked to you guys last night it got super interesting we finally got introduced to Jax, which if you know anything about this trilogy you know he's like the main guy in the once upon a broken heart trilogy which is the spin-off from this one so it was very interesting to finally meet him and finally see who everyone was talking about and so that made it super interesting for me ever since that i've been even more invested 
in the story so hopefully i can finish this tonight it's currently lunchtime right now but i really want to get this done before tomorrow probably and i am just excited to see where it goes what i think and what ends up happening i am really liking the main character in this one and i also really like the romance i will say one thing that's kind of annoying me is i just want to find out the identity of one of the main characters i feel like it's up in the air who this person is sorry if that's vague i just don't want to say too much but if you've read it you know that there is a main character or a looming type of character in the books and so far the person's identity wasn't revealed in caraval and so far it hasn't been revealed in legendary and i just want to know so i hope that part doesn't get it dragged out until the third book because i think that would kind of annoy me because i'm just ready to know and if feel like it's kind of keeping me invested to not know so you kind of understand why she's doing it but i'm like just tell me but anyway i am going to read a little bit now but i will update you guys later this last night and something happened and it just got me so invested in the story and I was flipping the pages so fast I don't know if anyone else is like me but sometimes when I'm just like trying to get back into the book or just getting into it I read a bit slower so I felt like I was turning the pages so fast because I was really truly invested in the story I feel like one thing about these books is there's not like a whole lot of action in it it's lots of I don't know. I feel like it's lots of speculation, dialogue, and kind of just being there for the vibes. But we got to a part in this book where there's kind of a big action scene and that really kept me invested. I feel like there's also something that was almost kind of revealed. We'll see if what was revealed is going to end up panning out. I am just feeling so excited about reading more of this and finishing it today. I only have a little bit more. I think I'm like almost 70% through so I should be able to finish it here in the next couple hours especially if I really hone in and get to reading. So I think that is exactly what I'm going to do. Oh I was also listening to Folklore last night and I don't necessarily think it fits the vibes of this book too much but it's still just really nice to listen to it and have that background music with it and it was on the record player so that made it even more special so I loved that whole experience but now I am going to get to reading and hopefully the next time I update you I will have finished this book. for you and that is that I finished Legendary and I loved it. I loved it even more than Caraval which was pretty surprising because I have heard things like Caraval is people's favorites and it gets worse after Caraval. I guess I can kind of understand why just because this book follows a different person it introduces some characters and there's some reveals made that people may not like as much but I ate it up. I loved it for some reason. I just thought it was so magical, addicting, immersive. I really felt like I was in the world and the romance in this it was so cute it had me tapping a little bit i didn't tap too much because i don't know i sometimes i feel like it takes me out of the story because i have to grab a tab at it but there's some lines that were just way too amazing not to remember so this was just really fun i feel like this book while it does have a plot i feel like this book is a lot of character growth character development just following along with these character stories if that makes sense and it's kind of like a lot of vibes <laughs> I would say like magical vibes, descriptions, but I mean I want you guys to hear that and think that nothing happens in these books because stuff does happen but I feel like it's just like a very vibey type of book. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. I really loved it. I am going to start finale. I really kind of liked where the story goes. I am interested to see where finale ends up going. I'm going to start that actually right after this vlog. I'm also starting a new reading vlog with that book so stay tuned for that but this book just completely sweeps 
sweeps you away and puts you in a magical world and I can tell I am going to be so sad when it's over because I feel like no other books compared to this world and the style of writing or at least not that I have found but luckily Stephanie Garber also has the ones upon a broken heart trilogy which I am so excited to get to especially after meeting Jax in this book and yeah I just feel like so happy I liked this as much as I did. I will say I ended up giving it a 4.5 because in the beginning I was a little bored. I was like mm, I don't know it kind of felt a little similar to the first book so I wasn't for sure how I would feel but I ended up getting very invested and I mean I binged like half of this book today so after you get past like the 20% mark I would say it gets so interesting and you get invested there's new characters introduced and I don't know I just really liked it. There's also an interesting aspect of the story where you follow fates which are like kind of all powerful beings that ruled the world like long ago and I thought that was a very interesting aspect to the story. I feel like it's very unique and yeah I think that's really all. I would definitely recommend the Carva trilogy and that actually concludes this vlog too. So I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I gave five stars and that is the one that my younger brother chose and then I read American Rose that's the one my younger sister chose and then I read Legendary and that's the one my youngest brother chose. So thank you to them for picking these books out for me. It was honestly a hit because Seven Husbands was five stars, American Rose was four stars and legendary was 4.5 stars and they got me to read books that I probably would have been putting off for a long time so thank you to them again for choosing my books for me and if you want to see more reading vlogs from me subscribe if you enjoyed this video give it a like and I will hopefully see you in another video soon.